I've been, I did more time in maximum security while I was upstate than anything. Maximum security in the box. The box is like going to jail in jail. Oh. The longest I ever did in the box so was six months. I did six months in the box. So I took on time? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can see it. You can say that. Well, yeah, by, so. the way the box is upstate is they got like, um, it's like, well, only Southport is like solitary confinement. It's like one man cells. But in the box upstate, it's like you can have a bunkie, but usually dudes don't even want to be bunked up with no, nobody else, really. So we be, we be beating their bunkies up or getting a fight or whatever just to get their own cell or something. But most of the time when you move around and all that, it, you basically just going to get another bunkie. So it's like, let me chill, just fall back. You know what I'm saying? I ain't that bad. But the, the dangerous thing about that is I could, you could come into the same cell. Like, say, a crib could be brought into my cell, and I don't know. And he not gonna tell me he crit because he know in the in the in the P now in the prison is majority bloods in here. So he's not gonna just come in and be like, yo, I'm crit. Even though it, there are dudes like that, don't get it don't get it twisted. Because like my boy KC, if he came in, you would see he was like that. And I'm and I and I was upstate with him too. And that's how he was. But he got cut when we was in five points. You know what I'm saying? Because he was one of them dudes, he was like me, like, yo, I'm crit, I don't care. Niggas ain't gonna ain't gonna get at me like it is what it is. If you gonna get at me, then get at me. But I ain't gonna be like, yo, hiding and ducking. You know, nobody don't wanna live like that. So it was different. Like I said, it was different. But. Um, we we've been like writing about how like criminals, like some juveniles go to jail and like they're not that violent and they go in there and then they learn things from mm-hmm. other. Did you did you learn anything from anyone in jail? Like did you? I I just learned I learned a lot of self control and patience in jail. Okay, so that's better. Yeah, I, I, I was more like, because me personally, when I What about in, the majority of the guys that you've seen come right, in? The majority of the guys that go in there, you come right back. You know what I'm saying? Because, I don't know, they, just, they don't catch influence? on as, they don't catch on as fast. It ain't even an influence sometimes. Because when you go to prison, it's like, yo, I've been by myself, so I ain't about to listen to nobody else. Like, nobody will to tell me what to do. You know what I'm saying? So, when, when, when a lot of dudes that come out and, like, I actually was in jail, and my man, he left from the Ted. And I went to the next jail I went to six months later. He was in there. I'm like, damn, you just went home. How the hell are you get him in here? Like, yo, man, the streets is tough. He's crazy out there. You don't even know. <laughs> he's in Buffalo, you know what I'm saying? Like, my man, my man is from Buffalo. I'm like, damn, son, it's crazy. And he just did like six. I'm like, damn, son, I ain't coming right back, dude. That's crazy. I'm like, I ain't coming back. Like, I, ain't been, I ain't been back to jail since. I've been out since 07. I ain't, Let me ask I ain't you been this. In no, I ain't been in no police contact like that. Like, little stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, you said that you've been, you've still been, how young old? Nah, I maxed out upstate. You maxed I didn't, didn't want to come home and be on the paper. Oh, you maxed out? Yeah. Okay. okay, all right. Basically, so, what that means is I did all my time in jail because yes, I didn't, didn't want to come home and be on parole and had to okay. report to people. So I don't like reporting nobody. Uh, so you're the real deal? Yeah, I'm the real deal. I ain't, I ain't trying to I give to report. it to you. I'm not, no, I'm he's not, the real deal. I'm not sure. trying to report to nobody. He's 17 in the max, and he come home, look at his face. He ain't got no cuss on his face. Hey, he was a what's up. My um, friend, he did the same thing. Mm-hmm. He, like, went to jail for the maximum because yeah. he didn't want to come back, go to, you know, listen to someone. Yeah. So he went to Ithaca and then moved to Syracuse because I guess there was too many people. Mm-hmm. He kept switching around, and he said that, like, Syracuse, he did not want to be there because he was the only black guy there. In, in Syracuse? In Syracuse. What, in Syracuse? The city of Syracuse. Oh, the city. He was out. He was, he was in, the, in the civilian? He was in I mean, prison he was, in he a, was just He was in the, the outside? In the town or he was in jail? Yeah. In Syracuse. It was, he was there for seven months? Joe, in was prison, jail? Right? Yeah. Oh, prison. Oh, oh, no, not jail. It wasn't prison. Wait, 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 there's a lot of black people. I play football for Syracuse University. There's a lot of black people. <laughs> that's well, that's no, crazy. there's a lot of black people there. He well, he was, he said he was in prison no, with a lot of white people. There wasn't no black people. I mean, it wasn't no white people. There wasn't no black people, sorry. Well, he says that hardly any, and he's like, I don't understand, because I, there's a lot, I know there's a lot of people. Was he in the mat? He was in the medium? It don't even sound like it. Oh, Nida. Oh, no, he's on Nida and all that. Yeah, yeah. On the dog and Yeah, they got on the dog and all that. Yeah, it were, but, you know, like I said, man, I'm, I'm satisfied with my life now. You know what I'm saying? I love I love teaching people about this lifestyle, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, like I like I said, I didn't get the same guidance, but I love to get the guidance, you feel me? Especially being that I got the seniority and experience with this lifestyle, you know what I'm saying? You seem very, like, laid back. Like, I I'm am, very naive, like, like, 
Y'all like the coolest person. Like me, right? This is why. That's just that's just how society portrays us. Like we society just put us under the dirt just because you know that's just the way it is. You know, that's the way they operate. But, but uh, me personally, I know I know I know that if I didn't go through life the way I did, I wouldn't be the way I am now. You know what I'm saying? The laid back person you yeah, see. Exactly. That's what he's saying. He would. I'm telling you, it's the devil. See, believe it or not, I I want to be. I want to be. Really, I, I really want to be me and really go against the system and everything, but I just know, like, this, I'm going to just put myself in a hole by doing that, so yeah. it don't really make no sense. Now if, I had, now, if I had the right people in the collective to do it, I would do it. I'm so serious. <laughs> because I understand the fact of that's involved. Um, did you have to get, like, any tag or anything, like a tattoo or something on you? No, I don't have no tats. I'm clean body. I have no tattoos. I, and that was my choice, you know what I'm saying? I just don't want no tattoos, period. Like, a tattoo is not going to make me... Who I, am, you know? I got I'm, tattoos. I got the rep I got with no tattoos. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, you know. What was like the like with your like women in the gangs? Was there any? Or no? And me personally, I never I never embraced women in gangs. Mm-hmm. I never really embraced it because me personally, women is not for women. The way this the way this was designed was supposed to be. We spoke the gangs period was designed and created because we supposed to be the vanguards of our neighborhoods. Like we supposed to be the police of our own neighborhood. I'm saying because the police don't, the police is not here to protect and serve us. They here, to, they here to protect and serve the establishment they working for. You feel me? This is why a lot of police, uh, kids get shot and stuff, and people get getting murdered, and none of them never go to jail. They just get a slap on the wrist, loss of pay, suspension, and they back in, back at work. You know what I'm saying? Good. But like in the time, you gotta understand the time frame too when this was, when it was created back in the '60s. A lot of oppression going on in the black community. Like the Black Panthers, like they they was trying to help people in their community, but the government was trying to kick them down and disrupt up what they um, disrupt what they had going on. You feel me? So like I said, you just gotta understand who's who and what's what. You feel me? Like me personally, the gangs is for is is for the hood, but it took a turn. It took a turn when the government started bringing the drugs into the neighborhoods, uh, the, the, the manipulation through. Uh, starting beefs between the Crips and the Bloods, uh, going to a Crip neighborhood, tagging Blood stuff up, going to a Blood neighborhood, tagging Crip stuff up, and they thinking it's each other, but it's not even them. It's a middleman involved that nobody sees, you feel me? So that's really how a lot of this uh, tension got between the gangs. The, the what you call it? To, um, let me, can, I, let me, can I answer some questions? I'm a dick. <laughs> Speaking of giving you a lot, of come, a lot of people come from the streets and to the military or whatever, so, or the NFL to the Whatever, like I know, I know homies in the NFL, in the NBA, uh, lawyers, doctors. Lawyers, do- yeah, like some of the homies on the the way the West Coast move. I love the West Coast because it's the way it's structured. Like they got business. Like the the gangs over there got businesses, lawyers, some doctors. You know what I'm saying? It's just not about just the street. The street is just what's portrayed so much because that's the negative aspect. You feel me? But it's actually it's some of the hoods out there that do good things. Like they, they create jobs for people. Like some of the hood like me personally, I got a multimedia service company and a management company and two labels I'm behind right now. So I'm trying to create my own jobs, you feel me? For people around me. This is why I'm working with Crips right now and, and the Bloods. Like I'm bringing we all just coming together because it's like it's nonsense once you understand what's real, you feel me? Once you understand what's real about this lifestyle, you're like, yo, this is crazy. It ain't really like this. Mm-mm. This is not how it's supposed to be. It's not even supposed to be like this in the first place. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of a lot of homies, and, and I don't respect a lot of these homies, be breaking the rules, period. Because they not, they just, they just flowing with the times now, you could say. But me, you call me old school. I'm old school. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Legitly like a set of rules? Or? It's not, it's not a legit, it's certain principles we live by. Not even rules, principles. You know what I'm saying? Just principles as a person, period. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, me personally, I never would just go... Like, I, I, some of the games on both coaches to just go cut people or shoot people, and I would never just do nothing like that because that's not me. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of, a person who hasn't had that proper care for the whoever who mind hasn't been properly nurtured, they're, they're thinking like that. You know what I'm saying? Because but, of somebody might be like, yeah, you got to cut this person, do this, do that. You know what I'm saying? But let me ask you guys. Uh, in your opinion, do you think uh, with 
everything that you've seen going on with the uh, uh, gangs, mm -hmm. do you think they are uh, a good thing for a neighborhood? Yeah, I do in a way because, like I said, we the we the we the warriors on the sh we we the, we the people's we we the people's police. We not the police police. We the people's police, meaning that we supposed to everybody in if you in the gang period, you are supposed to be taking care of your own people. You're not supposed to be out here violating, disrespecting anybody and, and all this craziness that is going on out here. But like I said, that's taking place because they're not being properly taught about this lifestyle. Well, that's that's why I don't I don't I don't agree that be, because of that reason, I don't agree that they should be in the neighborhoods because everybody is not. You have to understand that most people in these gangs, just like, you know, we all know the statistics, like they got a lot of people that don't have high school educations, come from single parent households, the education level. I know bloods that are 21 years old that haven't been to other parts of Brooklyn that don't can't read a book right now, will not be able to read a page out of a book. And so you're dealing with a lot of youths that, that are so far behind the times that they can't, they can't understand progression. A lot of people can't understand progress and understand, like, this is the, the way to move. They see it as, oh, that's being a sucker, you being a sellout, and stuff like that. You feel me? So I don't I don't agree with it, like, like in the neighborhoods and stuff like, like that, because it, it, it just turns into a, a whole different thing. Like, that's what happened. That's what happened with even the West Side Bloods. What happened was... They were all they banded together. He'll tell you all this stuff. That's why that's why I love being East Side. You know what I'm saying? Because he could tell you all these great positive things on why they did this and why they did that. But at the end of it came pimping, prostitution, violence. And what happened was they got the numbers up in their neighborhoods, and now they understood that we have the numbers. We control what's going on, so we're gonna do what we want to do around here. Okay, so that good. yeah. That's what I'm really talking about. Yeah. Because I know for that's what I'm yeah. Gangs, a lot of times the undercurrent. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 goals is drugs, prostitution. See, that's just that, that's I mean, financial base. Wow, that's just money. Wow, that's yeah, because they're being is. manipulated by the money. And a lot of people, a lot of in the black community, man, I don't care what nobody say. Me personally, man, I'm trying to get a job and all that stuff. Been on. I had one job at J.C. Penney, and that's it. After that, I ain't no other job. That's when I'm like, man, I can't work for nobody because they can chop you when they want. Now I got to create my own lane. Now, you know what I'm saying? I do understand. I I don't understand what you're saying, but the, we have so, to realize so. we have to realize the the main problems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like when you have drugs, prostitutions, and they are being run by gangs in the neighborhood. Exactly. So there's no positive outcome that's gonna come from that. Yeah, but but like I said, that's based on finance. They just chasing the money. I do understand, but that's what the I'm same mean. the same extent that you're talking about being good. Like what about those? But not, I don't, I, oh. What about those gang members that have the power that are doing all those things, that yeah. are trying to educate those youngsters and try to get them to go to school? They not, they not trying to educate, and they just using them for money purposes. Money is always an issue, that's what it is. Well, and, uh, according to this, then we could conclude that basically they are not good, positive outcome for neighborhoods. Yeah, you could say that now, just because of the, the way things are, but I'm talking from individual aspects. No, I don't understand, and I respect the, uh... But, I, I mean, what I have to say about, like, as far as, like, how the neighborhoods go, as far as, like, the lower structure, like, it's good, it's, 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 it's in some neighborhoods, it's good because the, the police are not involved in the neighborhood, so, like, you're not going to have certain people coming from outside your neighborhood pillaging and raping and robbing the people that are inside the neighborhood, so it's kind of like... The stuff that they do is kind of minimized to what that gang specifically wants to do. Like they got so some they, gangs in Brooklyn what, what, what where you can't, allow? you can't come allow? on our block. You know what I'm saying? You can't. Nobody else. If we don't know you, can't come on our block. You're not gonna come beat somebody up on our block. You know what I mean? How you guys feel about it? Like uh, you got all these young ladies in your neighborhoods. Like uh, either she's she's in school and she has a friend from school not wearing any collar, mm -hmm. taking her home. And trying to leave. What's the response? Explain I'm gonna leave them alone, but but in a lot of neighborhoods they'll jump on them, try to rob them. But it depends. A lot of times it depends on that person's rapport in the neighborhood. If she's just a girl who who's not a loud mouth, you know, going out there doing this, that, and the third, you know what I'm saying? Then people are not gonna leave. If she's just like a girl who goes to school and comes home, people are gonna leave her alone. But if she's like one of those girls that's out in the street, want to sleep with this guy, want to sleep with that guy. Then it, you know what I mean. That's it, it goes on like a person by person basis. Who 